So I just want to echo some of the words that were said and thank you all for being with us and a special thank you to Kairos Canada, which has been supporting justice and which has been in partnership with us for the past 10 years. And it's always uplifting and rejuvenates our hope when we see all of you viewers, we see this organization, many others that are taking time from their day, not worrying about their own pandemics or the conflicts within their communities or societies, and instead coming here to engage with our narrative, with our experience, and listen to us. And hopefully, will be moved towards helping us fight injustice and bring about justice. So if you look on the presentation that we have, we have three maps. They're all the same map and they're all of Trump's proposed peace plan. The reason we don't have a map of the annexation is because nothing has been clearly defined yet. At the moment, everything we know about annexation from the Israeli government is through oftentimes very vague statements and with little information about different territories that will be affected. But as he was saying, annexation isn't something new. It's something that has been practiced since the creation of Israel and since, especially in 1967, with the creation of the settlement movement. If we look at the three maps, you can see, especially in the first and the last, of course, the one in the middle is the current, and then it moves to either of those if this annexation, based on Trump's plan, is to go through what we see is a Swiss cheese Palestine. Palestine already looks like a Swiss cheese, but this will deepen the divide between the different territories. And especially for the delegation that was here, they can tell you some of the checkpoints and some of the difficulties, the physical barriers that the average Palestinian has to go through to move from one territory to the other. With annexation, this divide and these physical barriers will increase. And one thing that has been clear from the get-go is we've had Israeli spokesperson after the other from the government, official spokespersons, saying that the Palestinians in those annexed territories will not be given citizenship. They will not be given the same rights as Israelis under Israeli law. But they will be living under Israeli law and in some cases under Israeli military law, just like many areas of the West Bank already do. So annexation, how will it impact our life? It will impact our life socially, economically, and politically. When we talk socially, of course, creating this divide between the different communities. Since 1967, we have been alienated, especially after the establishment of the Palestinian Authority from the Gaza Strip. And so already you have the West Bank and Gaza Strip divided, and they're so divided that they have basically become their own subcultures. And now that will increase on the level of the West Bank within the West Bank between these different societies. Also with tensions rising, because of annexation, a large part of the West Bank's food basket or bread basket will be taken because in this annexation, it's oftentimes the land that is most fertile with the least number of population that is annexed first. And so within that, within our context, the olive tree and olive groves and agricultural farmland is a socioeconomic viable source of income for many families and households. And so with the loss of that, we expect the loss of unemployment, the loss of income for many families. And already one third of all Palestinian households suffer from food insecurity with another third being at risk of food insecurity. And since COVID began, we were on lockdown in March, and up until June 21st, we had less than 600 cases. But what we've also had is the loss of the tourism sector and the tourism industry as tourists haven't been able to come into the Palestinian territories. And so we've seen unemployment rise drastically in Bethlehem reaching over 80%, upwards of 90%. And so we expect this food insecurity to be on a drastic rise and continue to do so without any adequate plans or without any adequate sources to help alleviate the suffering or the scarcity that has been caused and created by both the annexation and the COVID crisis. Furthermore, the annexation moves to increase the number of settlers and settlements and to change the settlements 
from settlements to Israeli annexed territories and land. And within that, we already see cuts in the water supply. Bethlehem has received a 70% cut in its water supply. And we are also will be seeing cuts in the electricity supply. Due to the political situation, unfortunately, and the lack of control on the borders, Palestinians must go through Israeli channels to be able to bring in the equipment. And for security reasons, which until the moment do not have to be disclosed, Palestinians haven't been able to produce or build their own electrical facilities. And 90% of the trans water border or of the water resources on transporter have been restricted and confiscated by Israel. And so we rely on Israel and the Israeli government for both our water and electricity supply. And with this threat of annexation, with the increase of settlements, there's already been plans underway to cut the supply drastically to the West Bank to be able to feed and supply the new and growing settlements with this electricity and water. 